What's up, YouTube? I'm gonna go uh, show you my new my new mod that's arrived in the mail, and uh, it happens to lie in this box. So let's get it uh, let's get it open and take a look. This is is a rear differential that I bought pre-owned. Um, it is a SRT housing with a wave track posi unit and 323 Richmond gears in it. So this is going to be a significant upgrade to my 265 open differential that's in the car right now. And so, uh, you know, going from 265s to 323s is going to be great. It's a should be a perfect combination of, you know, still being able to get decent highway mileage, um, but definitely hoping the off the line performance that I really uh, is the one thing that this car is lacking. And of course, the Posi uh, wave track is just you know going to help me hook so much better than an open diff. You know, I can do, you know, the car typically <clears throat> at this point, well, I shouldn't say at this point, the car typically, whenever I do a burnout uh, or take off, it seems that both rear wheels spin. So, you know, my back in the day when I had an open diff in my uh, 72 Skylark, which was my first car, you know, that thing would do one wheel peels all day long. Um, so I'm not sure what the difference is between a modern day open diff and uh, you know an open diff of you know back in the day in the 70s but uh, you know whenever I do do a burnout like I said rear both rear wheels tend to spin uh, I have had one instance where only one tire spun um, and that was uh, at the track I accidentally went got one tire wet in the burnout box and that tire did not spin when I did a quick burnout the, the the driver's side did, the passenger side didn't. Uh, that's the only time I've ever noticed it, just having a one wheel peel. Otherwise, whenever I, I gun it, both wheels do go. So uh, again, I'll have to research more on like what makes uh, the modern day open dip different than um, you know one back in the day where it was a literal one wheel peel. That's where the, the phrase comes from. Um, but. In any case, this puppy here is definitely going to uh, is going to help alleviate any off the line sluggishness. Uh, I didn't want to go to 391s; that's just too aggressive for me. And 306s was what I was originally going to go with, but then I, I thought, you know, is that going to be enough gear? Um, is it going to make that much of a difference? You know. So I happened to stumble across this a day after it was posted and I jumped on it before it was gone. And so uh, yeah, this should be a, like I said, this should be a really great upgrade uh, for my quarter mile performance, which the car last time I took it out ran 13.5. So almost a half a second improvement over my first time bringing it out or ran a best of 13.9. 13.5 for a 4,000, 4,100 pound car uh, is pretty awesome. You know, uh, you know, just a stock 5.7 with bolt-ons and a tune and um, 265 gear. So I'm hoping, hoping that this puppy here will put me in the low 13s and if I can hook good enough, maybe even uh, high 12s. My best 60 foot time was a 2.21. So if I get down to a 1.9, um, you know, I should be right there. Uh, yes, quick update, Sapphire's gonna go faster. Peace out, YouTube. What's up, YouTube? I just wanted to give everyone that subscribed to my channel a shout out. I just reached 169 subscribers, which I know for the regular, 
you know, big time YouTube uh, channels is nothing. But for me, that's pretty cool, obviously, with my uh, channel being 169 Design. So, uh, to all you guys, I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully there will be a lot more videos to come uh, with some cool new mods and uh, some more track time and, and stuff like that. So uh, thanks again and uh, look forward to making more videos.